You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I am Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Friday, y'all. It is it, Friday. It is. <laughs> it's also uh, Friday. I wouldn't. Say, it's not technically the first Friday of the month, which is when we cover the uh, searching the scriptures um, that was article last week. in. Yeah, that would have been last week. But last week, if we would have done it, then it was the first Friday. It was the first day of the month, too, so I don't think people would have had them in their mailbox yet, necessarily. <laughs> so we're waiting. We waited until today um, so that folks could get their copy of uh, the Lutheran Witness so they can read along with Searching the Scriptures on page 25. We're going to dig into that in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, Pastor Wesley Odom from beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Arlington, Texas, and uh, author of the Searching the Scriptures Bible Study last month, this month, I think next month as well. Pastor Odom, thanks for joining us on the Coffee Hour today. Yeah, happy to be back, Andy and Sarah. How are things in uh, beautiful Arlington, Texas? Well, with everything going on, that's a bit of a loaded question, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can imagine as as most congregations around the country, we're uh, facing some challenging decisions with how we gather together and worship, um, you know, how, how we get the word of God into people's ears. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what we've been focused on here the last couple of months. But the Lord is gracious and merciful, and we've been happy to do what we're able in these past weeks. Amen. Thanks be to God. And glad that we can study God's word together this morning to get that into the ears of the hearers. And uh, this month's issue, there's a, a strong emphasis on uh, marriage, uh, which I find mm -hmm. very interesting, most likely because in, typically around this time of year, May, June, lots of weddings, uh, a little unusual <laughs> this year with, you know, global pandemic going on, nothing big. So, uh, but uh, a little bit of a difference, but you took a, a, a great dive into the word um, and, and looking at marriage, and particularly even before we, we dig into the study, uh, making us look at the words wedding and marriage and matrimony, holy matrimony. Why, why is it important to, to for, is there a distinction and is it important to make a distinction between these words? I do think it's helpful to maintain this distinction. And I think it's helpful that our current hymnal, the Lutheran service book, uh, does this for us. So if uh, if the hearer or the, the one going through the Bible study has a, a copy of the LSB, they can turn to page 275. And as I mentioned in the introduction to the Bible study here, you're not going to find wedding service. You're going to find holy matrimony. And the word matrimony just means being in the state of marriage, right? So um, it, it's not that there's a massive distinction there. The key distinction here, which reminds not only the one conducting the service, the pastor, uh, but also those receiving the gift of marriage, entering into this blessed estate, is that it is just that. It is a holy estate. And it's a little... Uh, uh, kind of blip at the top of the page there, holy matrimony. But I think that if we can uh, take a minute to look at it, it will do um, uh, do some good work reminding us of the nature of marriage and what we're entering into uh, on that day. Sure. Yeah. The, the wedding is is that is that day is that point in time when when you have this occasion, the celebration, but then that that marriage, that state of holy matrimony continues on uh, until till death do us part, as we as we say in our vows. I find this funny. This is just a personal note. My wedding anniversary is actually in May, so this is super appropriate. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I so, think that. You, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, and when we think about the wedding, of course, everyone's gathering together on the day of the wedding for the service, right? Uh, but the more we can, can um, kind of move our minds to focusing on, um, you know, the, the estate that these two uh, sinners are entering into, I think it's helpful not only for the day, but also for 
the years to come, if anyone's paying attention, right? Because everyone's just waiting for the reception. But uh, <laughs> maybe the pastor can emphasize this in his uh, premarital catechesis with the the couple to be. Sure. So let's dig into the text to dig into the Bible study, searching the scriptures. Uh, so, so this question number one, uh, we we go back to the beginning, Genesis one through three. Marriage is is not a thing that we as humans created. Uh, when does God first initiate marriage? Well, I tried not to have people read the entire scriptures this month. Uh, <laughs> though the first the first question uh, does have you take a look at uh, what should be pretty, I think, familiar texts uh, to to the Christian. Uh, that's Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, so the point, of course, is that um, it is not man's invention. God himself is the one who creates, initiates, gives this gift of marriage uh, to Adam and uh, to Eve. And I think that it's somewhat easy when we consider all of the majestic works that God does uh, in his six days of creating everything that there is from nothing. Uh, and um, uh, when we move just beyond that, right, into Genesis 2, uh, that marriage also is part of this great creation, uh, this uh, 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 wonderful set of things that God gives to the crowning jewel of his creation, man. In in the second question, you d take us deeper into Genesis 2, looking at verses 18 through 25, and ask the question, how does this story define marriage? Um, what do we read here in Genesis 2, 18 through 25? The first thing to remember is uh, the overall context, right? That uh, what's happening here towards the end of chapter 2 is still in the paradise prior to the fall into sin. That marriage, uh, even though we might experience perhaps some very difficult times in our marriages, that doesn't mean that marriage in itself uh, is a wicked or evil thing. Right? Marriage uh, <laughs> exists in the garden prior to sin. That's kind of the first thing to note to there, uh, that when God uh, creates everything and declares it to be good and very good, uh, he sees Adam there alone and declares, uh, God does, that it is not good uh, for the man to be alone. So he wants to make a helper fit for Adam. It teaches Adam that there is nothing in creation uh, that is fit for him like what he is about to do for him uh, in bringing Eve from his very side uh, and even uh, you know, the father of the bride <laughs> walking Eve down the aisle, as it were, uh, to her, uh, to her husband Adam, there in paradise. And uh, yeah, sorry, you go have a follow up if you want. Well, I, I just I really appreciate the the point that you made that this occurs. Didn't even really think about this much before, but this occurs before the fall, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's a part of this beautiful, perfect creation. Um, it's not necessarily a restructuring after the fall to make things work better, but it is a part of a beautiful creation. It's, it's, it's what God created. That's just, that's yeah, it's kind of like, it's like work, right? Work exists prior to the fall into sin as well. Now, uh, this is why I wanted to include chapter three. These good gifts are, um, contorted into something that is poisoned by sin after the fall work, marriage, um, our relationship, of course, to God. That's what I think we primarily think about, right? That um, uh, my sinful um, my sinful nature has, has uh, ruined my perfect relationship with God that existed with my forefathers in the garden. Um, but work, marriage, yeah, these things are great and good gifts of God. It's good for us, too, uh, to not to be alone. Now, this is – there are um, – uh, circumstances, of course, when God does lead people into a life of, um, you know, being single and devoting themselves to, to prayer and others, uh, but the, the common way of man is um, uh, is to enter into this holy estate of matrimony. And there is something I think also to be said here for um, chapter 
uh, 2, verse 25, um, that the man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. I, I think there's something to be said for the the reality of marriage after the fall um, co- continuing to have this aspect of, you know, the husband and wife leaving his father and his mother and, and, and coming together in one flesh. I think there's something to be said there, uh, though, though I maybe haven't fleshed it out too well in my own mind about a beginning of, of a reversal of what happens after the fall into sin, right? Because Adam and Eve, what do they do? Uh, they, they, you know, get these fig leaves and they try to cover their shame, but that shame does not exist between the two of them prior to the fall and the sin. I think there's something of a beginning of a reversal of this in the one flesh union of marriage, even after the fall and the sin. Uh, now, of course, this isn't perfected uh, until uh, we all enter into the heavenly kingdom and live with with our uh, perfect bridegroom forever. But there, there is something of a reversal of this um, shamefulness of being naked before one another. I'm not talking about this apart from the forgiveness of sins, of course. <laughs> but uh, I, I do think there's something to be said there. Sure, that is an interesting point. So then, so then we go to the New Testament. Jesus picks up on on uh, this the story of creation and marriage in Genesis. Uh, what in Matthew uh, nineteen four to six? How does Jesus teach us to see that marriage is sacred? Well, yeah, uh, you know, we start at the beginning in Genesis because that's what Jesus does here in the gospel, right? He he brings us back to the beginning. It was not so in the beginning. And then Christ our Lord uh, says there in verse six, therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate, right? It is God who is doing the the, the joining together by his word, uh, here kind of thinking of, you know, the rite of holy matrimony uh, at the wedding. He is the one who is, it might seem like, you know, Joe and Sally have decided to get married and and the pastor is up there and he's speaking, but it, it's actually God's word that is joining those two sinners together until they die in sickness, health, uh, poverty and wealth and all that uh, good stuff that's there in the vows that the couple makes. It, it's like baptism, right? I mean, it looks like the pastor is doing all this stuff, but he's not, right? He, he is an instrument that the Lord is using uh, to make uh, a little child of God out of a child of the devil. Uh, and there in the in the rite of holy matrimony, God is joining these two together. Right? Uh, likewise, the, the kind of second half of this verse six I'm thinking about, that uh, let no man separate. I, you, you know, sometimes you might, you might hear someone say something like, well, uh, I'm married to this guy or this gal, and I just, I, I don't know, are they, are, I don't know if they're my soulmate, or is, is, is this the one that God really wants me to be with? And, and, and if they're, if they come to their pastor's office, the pastor will take out his hymnal and show them <laughs> the rite of holy matrimony and say, you, you can know without a doubt that this one, even though he or she might be a knucklehead, <laughs> but they are the one that God wants you to be with forever because he has joined you two together. And who, who are we, right? Us worms of men. Who are we to separate this thing that we know uh, God himself has done? And, and there's something important here in um, the address at the beginning of the rite of holy matrimony in the LSB in the Lutheran service book that um, – Uh, I'd like to read just uh, very quickly that uh, marriage is not to be entered into inadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God, right? A nice full uh, sentence there, a deep sentence, and um, I think kind of playing off of Christ's words here and, and other portions of the Holy Scriptures as well. Is it's just beautiful. I, it's nice to be mm-hmm. able to to sit and 
look at this text. We're studying, we're searching the scriptures uh, with Pastor Wesley Odom of Beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Arlington, Texas. He's written the Bible study, searching the scriptures in the uh, May issue of the Lutheran Witness called Holy Matrimony. We need to take a short break. When we come back from that, we'll continue our study with Pastor Odom. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Concord Matters is the program where we seek to be of one mind that is the mind of Christ. And to do that, Christ-confessing Concordians read through and discuss the Book of Concord, which is our Lutheran confession of faith drawn from Holy Scripture, so that you too may be of one mind and confess with Christ. Be sure to listen every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central on KFUO Radio or anytime on KFUO.org or anywhere you get your podcasts. Until we convene for Concord again, keep confessing, church. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are searching the scriptures in the May issue of The Lutheran Witness with Pastor Wesley Odom of beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Arlington, Texas. He's written the Bible study this month, Holy Matrimony. So we take a look at um, an Old Testament lesson, a gospel lesson. Uh, Shall we go on to an epistle lesson? Should we go to question number four, Pastor Odom? (laughs) Yeah, that sounds great. All right. So question number four, read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 23 through 25. And what is to be the focus of the service of holy matrimony? Oh, who and what is to be the focus of the service <laughs> of holy matrimony? Sorry, skipped a word there. No, that's fine. Yeah, so I, 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 I don't know. Maybe this question might seem a little bit out of left field, but uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of hoping to drive to um, – a view of this gathering together on a particular day for this rite of holy matrimony as a celebration of a great gift that God has given to mankind. And so when his church is gathered together around his word, uh, of course, we're going to be talking about Jesus Christ and him crucified. These words from 1 Corinthians are Uh, well-known, right? We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than man. That even even in this rite of holy matrimony, which of course is, um, it's not... uh, It's not, of course, the same kind of a thing as the regular divine service that we might gather together for on a Sunday morning. There's a focus here on these two individuals who are about to be joined into this uh, sacred estate. Nevertheless, Christ uh, is the focus of the day. The Lord himself is the one who's going to be joining these two together. Uh, Paul, of course, in Ephesians 5, uses Christ as the bridegroom and his church as the bride as uh, the um, the reality behind what earthly marriage is but a picture of. So the sermon, you know, it's about what Christ has done for us because, boy, these two, like all of us, are going to need to cling to the forgiveness of sin in their marriage, right? They're going to be sinning against each other because there is only one kind of marriage in all of creation throughout the universe, and that is between two sinners, their, uh, their home, uh, their Christian home ought to be a home that is uh, regularly partaking of confessing their sin to one another and forgiving each other. That ought not to be an extraordinary thing. It ought to be an ordinary culture of their home and their marriage. And that, that begins right here in this rite of holy matrimony. So then how does the biblical background of marriage determine how the church conducts the service of holy matrimony? In, in this way, the rite of holy matrimony is really not different than any of the other sacred rites of the church. What we believe and confess about something, which is what we've been talking about, marriage, 
this this whole time, right? The first kind of half of the Bible study. What is marriage? Whose uh, whose creation is it? Right. That always informs uh, how we conduct ourselves when we gather together. Right. Marriage is God's gift. Yes, we partake of it, but it is God's gift to us. And uh, as we come, you know, to the Sunday uh, service or your midweek service, when you gather around God's word, you're gathering around God's word here in the rite of holy matrimony as well. So we, uh, we conduct ourselves reverently, uh, decorously. The pastor reserves the right to uh, kick out the groomsman if he's drunk, uh, because, <laughs> you know, that, that does not have a place in, in uh, God's holy house and in the sacred rite. Okay, we have about five and a half minutes left, Pastor. Where do you want to go next? Uh, what question do you oh, want to okay. get to? I thought this was an hour. Come on, guys. <laughs> no. um, it might need to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, this this kind of second half is sort of what what I'm I'm, I'm trying to uh, to think about here. That uh, as I just said, that, that marriage is is God's creation, it's his gift, and he is actually doing the main stuff here uh, when we gather together on that day when these two are joined together. Uh, 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 and I, I do think that there is a helpful kind of tip here in this uh, title for this service in the Lutheran service book, Holy Matrimony, so that everything that happens in this sacred rite on this day is... Uh, of significant importance. The vows that the couple will make uh, are before God and man, right? Thinking about question uh, question six, or let your yes be yes, your no be no, back to Numbers 30, don't let uh, a man uh, make a vow lightly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the couple kneels uh, here uh, in question seven, thinking back to Psalm 95, six, oh come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our maker, something that really happens in the majority of the services uh, uh, in our hymnal. We kneel to show our relationship uh, to our dear Heavenly Father, uh, to, to teach ourselves, remind ourselves of uh, who is the one doing the stuff here in this, uh, in this service. Um, you brought up a, a very good point a little bit ago. I want to circle back around to that. You mentioned that. that yeah. This is a, a ceremony where where two sinners are, are being joined. The the opening line of, of Pastor's sermon in our wedding was, Andy, today you are marrying a sinner. And my bride's <laughs> response to that was, Amen, ever so lovely. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then he they turned to, to my bride and said, Today you are marrying a sinner. Amen. <laughs> um, but there, yeah, there, you know, there's certainly more than that to the wedding. <laughs> yeah, I try to, uh, in, in my time with couples prior to, to marriage, I, I kind of try to make it hard, right? I mean, because they're married. Your marriage is going to be hard. It's it's work. It's real work. And at the beginning of every session, when we gather together, the first thing I ask them is, do you still want to get married? <laughs> because you're not married yet. You don't have to get married. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of try to put them through the ringer and, and make them look at some um, um, serious and important topics that maybe aren't the most serious, important topics to them as they are looking towards that service, the dress, the tuxedo, the location, the music, and all, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to say and dance and all this good stuff. Uh, but let, let us focus rather on uh, who is the one who gives this to you? What is it? Uh, how can we uh, focus even in this uh, wonderful day for the two of you. How can we focus on who Christ is and what he has done for you and what he promises to do for your marriage? He has joined you together. Uh, no man ought rend it asunder. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, and what does that, what does that mean? Um, those aren't phrases or terms that we really use much today. <laughs> asunder. We don't really... I don't walk around using that word every day to you. It, it doesn't sound like a pleasant thing, does it? Right. <laughs> well, because because God doesn't consider it a pleasant thing either. So, uh, uh, yeah, those are those are the serious and weighty things that ought to be considered and 
and talked about uh, amongst the couple there uh, before they enter into this thing that, as the service reminds us, is not something to be entered into lightly or inadvisedly. So then in the last couple of minutes that we have, uh, there's this note at the bottom of the Bible study. We have a minute and a half left. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, just of the of the relationship and the picture that we have of Christ and his bride, the church. How do we understand that in, in light of all of these things that we've studied for the last half hour? Yeah, Paul, Paul does an interesting thing there in Ephesians 5 that um, he... He, he teaches us that God gives us marriage really to teach us something about how he relates to us. Uh, he is the bridegroom as, and we as the bride. Uh, and, and this is a you know, commonly used text in the service of holy matrimony. Uh, and for good reason, it reminds the couple, it reminds the pastor, it reminds all of those gathered together there, uh, again, of who these two are, two sinners, that God nevertheless desires to join together uh, because it is not good for man to be alone. And he desires them to uh, live together in, um, um, in, in confessing their sins to one another uh, and receiving the gift of forgiveness, coming together to the Lord's house to worship the Holy Trinity, uh, Lord willing to bless them with children, that they be fruitful and multiply. And um, all of those weighty and beautiful, I say weighty, but they're beautiful as well, things ought to come into that day. Mm. Holy matrimony. I started to say wedding, but it's holy matrimony. That's what we're talking about today. <laughs> With Pastor Wesley Odom of beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Arlington, Texas. Pastor Odom, thanks so much for joining us for Searching Scriptures on the Coffee Hour. Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.